Hi, I'm Kristen Lowe and we are back on basically how to file for divorce and how to start the divorce process. So you have successfully filed your petition, your summons, and if you have minor children, your UCCJEA. What next? Well, the next step is serving your spouse. And once you serve your spouse, you're going to be filling out a proof of service of summons. So we're back on the home page. We're going to go to commonly used forms. And we are going to go down to proof of service of summons, which is FL115 or FL115. All right, so yes, is this feeling like deja vu yet? Yes, we are going to start just like we always do with filling out your name. In this case, let's go back to our beloved John Smith. And John lives at 124 Rose Street in San Ramon, California, because we are in Contra Costa County. And the zip code 94582. His phone number. 415-442-5577. Again, it does not have to be your home number, but it does need to be a number where the court can contact you at. Fax number, email address, completely optional in Contra Costa County. As of this year, they're still not emailing anyone, including attorneys. Attorney 4, we're going to fill it out in pro per, meaning self-represented. You're representing yourself throughout this case. If you want to use fancy schmancy words, you can put in propia persona. It all means the same thing. We are in the county of Contra Costa. And the street address is 751 Pine Street. And the city is Martinez. We only have one family law center in all of Contra Costa County. Uh, mailing address, sorry, I missed that. That would be uh, PO Box 911. That's not at all ironic. And the zip code, city of zip code Martinez, California 94553. And if you want to get fancy, the branch name is the Peter L. Spinetta Family Law Center. And even if you don't want to fill that out on your forms, it is important for you to know the building because if you go down to the courthouse, it is referred to as the Spinetta Family Law Center. Yes. And the petitioner, that would be John Smith. And the respondent would be Jane Smith. And by now that you've filed for your divorce case, you do have a case number. So by the time you get to your FL 115, you must fill out your case number. And in this case, if you are filing in 2015, it will always start with a D15 dash and then whatever five digit case number it is. But you are required as of this form on to be always putting in your case number. All right, so now we are going to let you know what the court hours are, which in Martinez are going to be from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. If you arrive at 8 o'clock right on the dot, that's exactly when the courthouse is opening, so I, I usually recommend getting there about 8.05 or 8.10. All right, so when do you do the proof of service? Well, after you've served your spouse. How do you serve your spouse? Well, there are two ways to serve your spouse first way and the most common way is by personal service. What does that mean? It means somebody over the age of 18 who is not you, meaning the petitioner, has served your spouse, meaning the respondent, with a copy of the papers. The other way is by proof of service by mail and notice of acknowledgement or receipt. So the other way is by mail. And what I usually say as a test is, if you two are getting along, this is amicable, this is expected, you can do it by mail. And it's a less invasive, it's a nicer way of doing it. But, and here's the caveat, the caveat is that your spouse has to be responsible enough to sign the document and send it back to you or give it back to you. Otherwise, it's not valid service. What does the proof of service of summons mean? It means that you have actually served your spouse. What does service actually mean? It means that the clock starts ticking, meaning your case doesn't officially start. It takes a minimum of six months and a day to get divorced. When does that clock start ticking? It starts ticking the day your spouse is served with the petition and the summons. So the proof of service of summons is incredibly important. And if you want to get divorced, you have to fill out this form correctly and you have to file it with the court on time. So let's get started. Um, at the time of service, I was at least 18 years of age and not a party to this action. Who is going to be signing this form then? It is the person who is serving the document. So you are not actually signing this document. That's the first thing to remember. It is whoever is actually serving the documents for you. My recommendation is that you fill out the form as much as possible so all that person has to do is sign, but it's up to you to make sure that the person signing the document has done so correctly. So you're going to check in this case 1A. Why? Because we are filing and serving the divorce papers. So 
the petition, which is the FL100, and the summons, which is the FL110. And, and this is where people forget, you need to serve a blank response, which is the FL120. And we will talk about how to fill out the 120 for the respondent later on. But for you, as a petitioner, you need to give them a copy of what it is that they need to fill out with the court. And it does say blank. You don't have to fill anything out. So you can just go on my website, download the form, print it out, and give them a copy. So what do you need to serve? You need to serve the petition, the summons, and a blank response at a minimum. If you have a minor child, and if you remember we have one minor child, we have Ryan, you also have to serve and file the UCCJEA. So we're going to go down to D, 1D, and we're going to check the box 1. D1. So you check the box D and also 1. And if you are serving other documents, obviously you'll need to fill that out. But we're talking about the bare bones minimum you've just filed for divorce. In John's case, he has a child, so he is going to be serving the petition, the summons, the UCCJEA, which is at FL 105, as well as a blank 120, which is the response, and just like it says in D1, a blank UCCJEA, which is the 105. All right, so then we're going to go down to number two, the address where the respondent was served. Assuming whether it's personal or by mail, you need to put down the address. So if you served your spouse at Starbucks or his or her place of employment, you want to put that address down. If you mailed the documents to them or served them personally at their house, you're going to put that address as well. So we're going to make up an address here. We'll say that uh, Jane was served at 100 Main Street. And we'll just pick somewhere out of county. Let's just say uh, it was in San Francisco, California. And then um, the zip code. And then we're going to serve by personal service. So we're going to check the box 3A. So we're, we're going to do this a couple different ways. But let's say that it was personally served. So personal service means somebody over the age of 18 who is not you physically handed Jane, in this case, the documents. So on what date? Well, let's just pick a date. Let's say uh, she was served on March 1st, 2015. And you don't have to write March. You can put 3-1-15 if you want to. But you do need to put a time. And it's very easy to miss these little blanks. So let's say she was served at um, 6.45 p.m. And you do need to put AM or PM. They will bounce you for that. So once it's personal service, you're done with that page. And we're going to go on to page two now. Number four is the next thing that you're going to need to fill out. So the person who served the papers. Let's say that John had um, his dad serve the papers. Again, not a part of the case over the age of 18. So does dad qualify? Absolutely. Um, let's say his name is James Smith. And what is James's address? Well, you don't have to put, again, James's business address or his home address. You do need to put down a valid address, so it's one or the other. Um, let's just say James lives at 123, um, I need a good street name. Why don't we say lives on Black Street? I don't know. And let's say James also lives in San Francisco. And that's why he was used to surf. And let's do a zip code. And a phone number. So that needs to be a phone number where the court could contact James in case there was any questions on the service. So let's say his number was 415-442-4567. And James is John's dad and he's not a process server. So we're going to put he's not and we're going to check B. And number five, he declares under penalty of perjury that it's foregrowing is true and correct. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, it is the name of the person who served the papers. It is not John's name. So in this case, it is James's name. So James Smith and John has to put the paper under his dad and say, uh, dad's nose and say, dad, date it and sign it. And remember, date is always above the printed name. It's in a funny place. Everybody always misses it. All right, so what happens if you do serve by mail? So let's go back up to the uh, first page 
and we'll clear it. We won't do personal service, let's say. Things are really amicable between John and Jane and we want to serve by mail. So we're going to uncheck the box number 3A and kind of omit all that information. And then we're going to do it by notice and acknowledgement of receipt. That's a different form and it gets attached to this form. And we already have a video on how to do the notice and acknowledgement of receipt. That's the FL117. Um, but for doing the proof of service of summons, we will attach that. So let's go on to page two at the very top. All right, so 3C, we are going to check the box, mail and acknowledgement of receipt. How did you do it? You mailed it to the respondent. Again, this is not you. This is somebody over the age of 18 who is not you. So it can't be John. So mail a copy to the respondent um, on whatever date. And let's use the same date, March 1st, 2015. And we mailed it from San Francisco. And this is where I know there's a lot of text, but just following the directions on the form, it's going to save you a lot of headache because the first box says with two copies of the notice acknowledgement of receipt. So what does that mean? You need to enclose two copies of the 117 with a self-addressed stamped envelope, the postage paid return envelope addressed to me. And then you complete, once it's attached, uh, you attach that notice acknowledgement of receipt. So when I said that your spouse has to be responsible enough, that's the document I'm talking about. So when you mail the packet out, it's the same thing whether it's personal or it's by mail. You're gonna serve a copy of the petition, the summons, if you have minor children, the UCCJEA, the blank response, and the blank UCCJEA, again, if you have children. But if you're doing it by mail, you're also going to include two copies of the notice and acknowledgement of the receipt. That's the FL117. And your spouse has to mail one copy back. So he or she keeps one and you get one back. And that 117 is what you attach to this document. And that is going to be the completion of the form. This, the rest of the information is going to be the same. It's still James who served the papers, same address, same phone number. He's still not a registered process server and he's still declaring it under penalty of perjury that he's done so. So it's kind of an extra step, but um, James has to sign it. We attach the signed notice and acknowledgement of receipt from Jane and that completes the proof of service of summons. So if you're doing it by, per, uh, by personal service, it's just the two pages. If you're doing it by mail and the notice acknowledgement of receipt, you have an extra step and you're going to attach that extra document. Uh, if you have any questions, and I know this is kind of a complicated form and service is a, not the easiest thing to do and to wrap your mind around, please feel free to reach out to me, contact me for more information or contact an attorney for more assistance. So congratulations, you've just learned how to fill out the Proof of Service of Summons, FL 115. So I wish you luck in being able to serve your spouse, whether you do it personally or via mail. And then we're going to be talking about that in our next video, which is the Notice and Acknowledgement of Receipt. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Our number is 925-215-1388, or you can contact me by email. My email address is kristen at kristenlolaw.com. Please also feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.